A very fresh good morning to all of you. This is Ayushi Sharma, your chemistry teacher. One more time, welcome back to the channel of chemistry. So, how are you all? Yes, I hope you all are doing well. So, let's begin with the next chapter. That is chapter number 4, Structure of an Atom. Let's begin with today's revision class. So students, as we know that atoms and molecules are the building blocks of any matter. The existence of different type of matter which are present around us is only due to the different types of atoms and molecules present in them. We know that for longer period of time it was thought that the atoms are indivisible particles. So they do not have an inner structure. But now in today's world we know that atoms are divisible as well as they do have their inner structure atoms are having smaller particles in them which are known as subatomic particles atoms are made up of three subatomic particles electrons protons and neutrons electron has negative charge proton has positive charge whereas neutron has no charge it's a neutral one we also know that protons and neutrons are present in the center of the atom which is called nucleus and electrons are outside the nucleus and revolve rapidly around it in a fixed circular path called energy levels or shells which will be studied under this chapter later on. Before revising today's topic, let's discuss some examples like if we rub a comb in our dry hairs and then we try to attract the small pieces of paper by using the comb. What will happen? Yes, the comb will attract the pieces of paper. In fact, if we rub a glass rod with a piece of silk cloth and if we bring it near an inflated balloon, so it start attracting the balloon as well. It means that on rubbing with dry hair, a comb gets electric charge. Even on rubbing with silk cloth, a glass rod also gets an electric charge. But again the question arises in our mind that where does this electric charge comes from? So the obvious answer is the atoms present in the comb and the glass rods. So this simple example tell us that some charged particles are present in the atoms of matter. So we can say that atoms are divisible particles. So in today's revision video we will describe how these charged particles were discovered. So today we are going to discuss the discovery of the first charged particle that is electron. Yes, the electrons were discovered in 1897 by the scientist J.J. Thomson. In this, the J.J. Thomson has used the discharge tube in which he has put the gas at lower pressure. Let's understand the process in detail by using the diagram. In this arrangement, J.J. Thomson took gas at very low pressure inside the discharge tube and vacuum pump is placed to maintain the pressure inside the discharge tube. On both the sides of the discharge tube, two metal plates are used which will act as electrodes. The metal plate which is connected with the negative terminal of the generator act as a cathode and the metal plate which is connected with the positive terminal of the generator will act as a anode. Thomson passed electricity at high voltage through this gas which is taken in the discharge tube at low pressure. Then he observed that the stream of minute particles were given out by the cathode and these streams of particles are called cathode rays as they come out of cathode. Now, the gas which is taken inside the discharge tube consists of atoms. We know that. And all these atoms contain electrons. When high electrical voltage is applied, the electrical energy pushed out the electrons from the atoms of the gas. These fast moving electrons form cathode rays. Thus we can say that formation of cathode rays shows that one of the subatomic particles present in all the atoms which carry negative 
charge known as electron later on in this experiment to know the nature of these electrons to know the charge which is present on the particle present in these cathode rays thomson placed two metal plates one is of positive potential other is of negative potential near by the cathode rays when he brought positive plate near the cathode rays it was observed that cathode rays were deflected toward positive plate and moved away from the negative plate which shows that the cathode rays carries a charge particle having negative charge so on the basis of this discharge tube experiment we can define an electron as the negatively charged particle which is found in the atoms of all the elements let's understand the concept of discovery of electron in more detail cathode rays are produced in a discharge tube a vacuum pump is used to evacuate the discharge tube the cathode of the tube is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and the anode of the tube is connected to the positive terminal of the battery it was observed that at normal pressure the gas did not allow the current to pass through it however when the pressure of the tube was reduced to 0.001 mm hg and a high potential difference between 10 kV and 20 kV was applied At the end of the tube, a glow was seen on the walls of glass tube. The rays emitted by the cathode travel towards anode. The attraction of rays towards anode reveals that the rays carry negative charge. Properties of cathode rays are 1. When any object is placed in the path of the cathode rays, these rays cast shadows. This shows that cathode rays travel in straight line 2 when a wheel was placed in the path of cathode rays the wheel rotates this shows that rays consist of some particle and some kinetic energy 3 in the presence of an electric field the rays are deflected towards the positive plate this confirms that cathode rays consist of negatively charged particles 4 in the presence of a magnetic field the rays are deflected this shows that the cathode rays are affected by the magnetic field i hope you have understood today's topic so don't forget to like my video and subscribe my channel and please do comment on my video Thank you so much for watching my video. Have a nice day ahead.